It was around last year this time that I got this scroll saw as part of a deal with Canadian Tire to promote their maximum brand tools. Um, I used it in the video where I made the push sticks. I actually used it to cut out my logo to stamp on the push sticks uh, with paint so that they would be logoized, I guess you could say. And first started using it, I noticed that the blade jounces back and forth or oscillates back and forth quite a lot. And it made it very difficult to do really precise cuts on the machine. So since it's not actually working well for me, I figure I don't have anything to lose by, you know, having a closer look at it and taking apart a little bit of it. Anyway, I took the table off here and I had a look at the mechanism. Basically, it's a bottom arm down here, top arm, and they pivot at this point right here, top and bottom. And since they pivot on a point, there's an arc involved and the arc will throw the blade alternately out and in as it moves up and down. So I was looking at it, looking at the counterweight down inside here, maybe it's not optimized for it, maybe that's contributing to the problem, but I didn't want to monkey around with that too much. I was looking for a much simpler solution and I got to thinking, what if I could restrain these uh, blade holders up here so that they would only go up and down and not jerk back and forth because they're free to move like this back and forth. So I cut out a piece of wood and the first thing I did was I put it on the front here and that worked well, but there's a little bit too much stuff on the front here. So I recut it again and I put it on the back and that seems to work a lot better. So now while I could do that with the wood, it will eventually wear out. Even if I oil it and even if it's a very hard wood, it will eventually wear out. I don't know how long that will take. But I have another material here, that's this ultra high molecular weight plastic. And the uh, upside to using this stuff is it acts as kind of a natural bearing and it doesn't wear out very quickly. So I'll try that. Uh, kind of already notched the, in the bottom corner here on here so that it'll clear the arm as it comes up, looks like. And so if that goes up tight against that, I don't want to get my thumb <laughs> in the arm down there and I'll turn that on and see how well that works. So I've taken the blade off again and put the table back in place temporarily just so I can measure how much clearance I have here. It looks like I've got almost two inches so that's plenty of space for the guide block to go in. Okay, I got my low friction bearing block made here, cut to size, and I think that'll work great. Uh, the problem comes in attaching it. Um, you know, I'd like to be able to bolt it directly down to this. The problem is that the lower arm here comes up and almost touches the underside of this deck here. So I can't drill through with a bigger hole and put a bolt and nut in there. And it would be virtually impossible to tap a hole in here because of the space you know this upper thing doesn't move so what i'm going to do is i'm going to attach this block to this piece of uh, maple that i have here and then i'm going to bolt that piece of maple down to the deck and because it's completely clear underneath here so what i did was i attached the maple block to the plastic block with a couple of screws here i didn't show that because Everybody knows how to do that. Um, I drilled a couple of holes in here. Now I'm gonna use quarter inch bolts to hold this thing on, but I need to have a little bit of adjustability. And when I you know, need a little bit of adjustability, what I do is I just drill an oversized hole and that will give me enough space to move it forwards and back and sideways and all that. So I put it in position here and I already marked out where the holes need to be drilled and I've got a 1 8 inch drill bit in my drill and the problem is once again the structure up here is in the way so I'm going on an angle.
Oh, you know what? I'm being stupid here. <laughs> I could drill this from underneath. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Tip it over. And yeah, <laughs> so much easier. Don't say it. Okay, that looks good. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's going to work. So, let's back up again. I got a fine mess on my workbench here. And so I've got my bolts here. Or at least I did. Yeah, here's the other one. I got my two bolts here. And these are longer than they need to be, but I don't see that as a problem. It's going to put the them in the hole. The bolts are, are flat top. Flat on top, but I've got these washers that'll go underneath it here, so it'll give me that adjustability that I want. So, yeah, that gives me quite a bit of range there, or at least as much as I need. So I'm going to get the nuts on here, and I'm going to tighten it up. And up to this point, I've only tested this at low speed. And it's worked well, but I've never cranked up the speed, so we're going to see after I get this tightened up how well this works. Okay, I've got it put on, and I think I have it adjusted correctly. It's definitely putting uh, force on the back of the thing here. Um, let's turn it on. And it looks good. It's traveling straight up and down like I wanted it to. Increase the speed here. Developing a little bit of a sound at that speed. I think what's I think what's happening is uh, when I notched the you know I cut that 45 degree uh, notch on the bottom there I didn't leave enough space and the arm is actually coming up and slapping the bottom that of that a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll take this off again and I'll cut a little bit more off of it and see if that works any better. Just shaved a very small amount off. I'll try it out and see if the situation has been improved. That's full speed. That's good. Not slapping anymore. The blade is very straight too. I put the table back on and I put a brand new blade in here and now it's time to try it out. Um, like I mentioned before, I had a problem cutting thin material on it, so that's what I'm going to try now. Well, that was certainly a lot better. There's no way I would have that much control and accuracy the way it was before with it bouncing back and forth like that. The question mark is, well, how long is it going to last? I don't know. But one thing about it is if you do it, then you can fix it. I got one other thing to fix with this table, and that's this insert here. It sticks down way too far. I don't know why they make stuff like that that has obvious... Uh, very small, very minor defects that really affect how usable a tool is. It would be easy enough to make an insert that would be absolutely flush with the top of this, especially if you're making thousands of the things. Anyway, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. I think all I need to do is build it up a little bit with some packing tape. Chicken, bad chicken, bad chicken. Bye chicken. Bye chicken.